Hello, I'm Professor Wall. Today we'll be discussing how to intelligently select security groups to modify when ma managing changes in your AWS environment. So let's recap uh, to some of the things we talked about in a previous lesson. So in the AWS environment, you can associate multiple security groups to each instance. Um, so let's look at an example of how that might be arranged. Um, so in this example, I have over here uh, eight uh, instances, eight VMs. Uh, and in the boxes, I've sketched out the organization of security groups. So to make it interesting, I've associated each instance with its own special security group that is installed only, only on it. So there are eight of these uh, black security groups, one per instance. Then we have another set of security groups in the blue that are regional. So we have uh, at the top here uh, a security group that is uh, for the European instances that's associated with VMs 1 to 4. And then we have the uh, um, security group associated with the American instances, uh, VMs 5 to 8 in this example. And then we also have one very broad security group that I've labeled web that is associated with all of the VMs, all the VMs because let's say they're all running web servers of various types. So each VM in this sketch has really three security groups associated with it, its own special security group, then the regional security group, and then finally the broad security group for the whole uh, uh, set of web servers. And this is, you can organize your VM to security group association in many different ways. This is a relatively uh, structured example uh, to show what I'm trying to show here. Uh, so you've done all this in, in the past, and now you have a new application rolling out, and the application owners want to add traffic from some system X using the HTTPS protocol to the VMs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, the VMs that I've marked here with red stars. Those are the VMs that are going to be part of this new application, and you are requested to make it happen and add rules to the security group so that this type of traffic is allowed by the security filtering rules. Uh, so obviously you need to write an incoming rule on some security groups uh, that are associated with these five VMs. Um, and the question that I would like to pose here is the question, which security groups should you modify to make this happen? So the thing is, there is quite a lot of choice to be uh, uh, thought about here. There are se several different ways of approaching the problem. So let me share with you a few. The first thing that you could do uh, is try to minimize your own work. So just do the least amount of work manually. Uh, and to do that, basically, you'd want to, to, to uh, modify the smallest number of security groups that get the job done. In this example, you could put this rule in the web security group. So you make one rule change in one security group, and this is going to be enough because the web security group is associated with all the VMs that you care about, numbers 1 to 4 and number 6. So that's minimizing the effort for the administration. This is the downside of this uh, uh, direction is that you have a lot of side effects. You're actually allowing this traffic also to go to VMs 5, 7, and 8, that were not part of the original request. So that those are uh, side effects which you potentially want to m minimize. The other direction is to use uh, the principle of least privilege. So you want to allow the requested traffic to go only to the places that it must reach but to nowhere else. Um, and to do that, one way of doing it is being very, very specific. So you can add the rule to each of the individual security groups, so security groups 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. So you write five separate rules on these five separate security groups and you get the job done. It's obviously the most specific, so there are no side effects, which is good, but you work pretty hard to do all that. And then there are other considerations that I haven't even touched on, such as application context. Well, this rule that I'm showing you here is a web 
type rules, so maybe it makes sense to put it in the web application uh, security group because it fits. Uh, what about future proofing? Well, the requesters wanted VMs 1 to 4 and VM number 6, but maybe from your experience you are assuming that they are going to be adding uh, VM 7 and 8 to this uh, next week, so you might want to preempt that and add the uh, rule to security groups that will cover the future expansion. Then there is a question of capacity. Perhaps one of these security groups is already close to the maximum number of rules that are allowed by AWS, so you want to keep some, uh, give yourself some cushion and not overload that security group. And then there are other options. You can, you, fi you can find a middle ground. In this particular example, <coughs> you could add the rule to the European security group covering VMs 1 to 4 and also just to the security group number 6 covering VM 6. So you just make two changes and you touch exactly the VMs that you need without any side effects. This is a carefully constructed example, uh, but you can see that there, there are multiple ways of thinking about the problem uh, and there are different aspects that you might want to uh, optimize. Um, so there is, there is some, some food for thought here and some uh, uh, need for uh, creativity and also for structure. So bear these types of considerations in mind when you build your structure of security groups and also when you're thinking about where to make a change. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>